is the Glass Cannon Network. What's up, scoundrels? Welcome back to Duskfall. This is the GCN. We're a uh, haunted city, a, a show where we play Blades in the Dark, the phenomenal role-playing game by John Harper and Evil Hat Studios. And with me, as always, I have my uh, scoundrel crew. They're a bunch of just deadly criminals, low lives, degenerates, scumbags. Uh, please welcome Josephine McAdam, Abu <laughs> Salim, and Ross Bryant. What's up, guys? I've been called worse. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, how's it? How's it going? What has everybody been up to? Ross, I saw you did a show. Uh, you know, Ross, very talented improviser, did a show where you were uh, pretending to be an emo <laughs> band. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, myself and uh, and three other very funny performers, Nick Mandernock, Jess McKenna, and Zach Reno, are a are members of the four lead singer emo band. Every place I cry. <laughs> <laughs> um every show is different because we make up all the songs <laughs> um and it was it was a true delight we 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 laid down some bangers <laughs> we gotta oh get a character on haunted city that sings a lot because i know that one thing that you're good at is singing off the top of your head <laughs> wow do you do you listen did you listen to emo when you were younger or still um i I, yes, <laughs> I had my. I, I, had my, I, like debating I don't know. I, I think I like. I missed emo because I'm 57 years old. So I, I that just wasn't part of my experience. Like, what are yeah. what should I check out? Like, what are the emo oh, bands, man? man? Like, I mean, you're uncorking quite the quite the keg here. I mean, and the thing is that like, there's there's many different things that you could call emo or that are emo adjacent, and um, I mean. And and within emo, of course, you know, there's there's screamo and there's like acoustic oh. emo. So so maybe you're maybe you like the light and gentle sounds of a dashboard confessional. Or maybe you're <laughs> into the more uh like bloodletting early crunchy sound of like a rites of spring. Um Bloodletting, like, is that what you used as a descriptor there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what kind of music is it? It's bloodletting. It's uh <laughs> or the, or blood the music. Or the maybe like the more heartbroken poppy stuff. Like the, you there's an argument to be made that a band like like Blink 182 has some emo tendencies. What, really? Yeah. Wow. I mean or but but like <laughs> I thought they we, were just rowdy bad boys, but you're telling me they're emo. Uh, bad I mean, boys. <laughs> if you listen to a lot of those lyrics, the ones that aren't like total like scatological, it's a lot of it, there's a lot of heartbreak there. Mm -hmm. But like I feel like the one that I really saw, like I, I grew up in the South, and so a lot of the like local scene emo bands would be really really Christian. Uh, a buddy of mine in in college was in a was in a Christian emo band called Burn the Shields. And Hell yeah, I love that a, name. Uh, there's a Florida. Uh, emo core or screamo band called under oath that i that i saw once um which is where i experienced live hardcore dancing for the first time which is oh, its own tell us more please about that it's it's this kind of like mix between moshing and break dancing it's a lot of air punching windmill kicking uh spin kicking into a into the sides of a pit it's um, a lot of windmill kicking yeah, and, and we didn't know no. the, yeah, I'm not yeah. going to that show. <laughs> Too much windmill kicking. Perhaps you are moved by the spirit of your emotions and or the Lord. <laughs> wow. wow. Uh, that's great. I'm going to check uh, some of that out. That sounds mm -hmm. really interesting. And in Florida, lots to scream about. So I could see why they would have. Uh, wait, what kind of so do you what kind of music do you I, I know nothing about you people. Josephine, what kind of music do you listen to? Oh God, I'm the worst when it comes to music because I will definitely listen to it, but I have no, I, I don't know anyone, like any artists, any song names. I just sort of either the radio is on or my friend sends me playlists, but I, my musical education is like so low. I play the piano and I listen to classical as well, but I listen to like all genres. Uh, my musical, my musical education is nothing. I mean, I do play the piano, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I do the enjoy the classical <laughs> composers. <No. laughs> but I still, even with that, I don't know who because I'll just put on a radio station. I don't, I don't like 
I don't know. I don't take the time to like go buy full no, albums. Or, I get like, it. Pay when you're not playing who. Bach on a piano, yeah. you <laughs> no. just listen to Maroon Five. I get it. Um, oh, except not that. I kind of like Maroon Five, and then Abu, I just assume listens to the Final Fantasy soundtrack uh, all the time. Um, yeah, all, all the, the time. time. I, I imagine Actually, Abu that listens great. to video game soundtracks because uh, you yeah. are a video game psychopath. I mean, it's, it's literally just everywhere and and <laughs> all the time, like every. Final every Fantasy. I, oh, was I right about that? Or I was just making. You, a... No, generally, like I do. I love. I actually love movie soundtracks and video game soundtracks. I'm obsessed right now with the Batman soundtrack. Um, oh, it was constantly good. always return to the Dark Knight soundtrack. Uh, Tenant is a very good soundtrack too. If you want to get into that kind of futuristic, you know, vibe. Um, That's I'm actually, what I like I, to play, actually. It's, right? Is, and then there's, is oh, soundtracks. what was the one that I was listening to? Oh, it's about this hollow guy, um, and it's Grime, Grime. So G, it's G-R-I-M-E, the game. That soundtrack is, like, phenomenal. Um, really kind of dark and almost um, just just evil brilliant um but i mean like look my, my musical <laughs> taste is, is is also kind of a bit weird in the sense that i'll like listen to like drake kanye west um rick ross and then i'll listen to lamb of god machine head evanescence mm -hmm. like i'm just sort of like into it all really um right uh but yeah i'm just sort of um sort well, of weirdo in that way i only listen to country music uh yeah um, doesn't surprise me uh, I'm from West Virginia, and that's the way I was taught. So I like Tim McGraw and Dwight Yoakam, and that's it. No, uh, I, I think that's what. Well, no, that's not true. Although I do like country a little bit. Dwight Yoakam's good. Yeah, I also like black metal, and uh, but of course, the greatest album of all time is Super Chunks Majesty Shredding. All right, my question before we get started is: Blades in the Dark emo Ross Bryant is it is it an emo game? absolutely yes are you yeah absolutely it is okay um, great. i don't know man i yeah. dare say that this is an emo core game well not what? the way you play it abu the way you play it it's a heavy metal game but the <laughs> way <laughs> the way most people play it it's a little emo i was going for like michael bay on steroids D, &D kind of sure vibe, you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. right on <laughs> right on in this uh, house there, <laughs> there are many rooms you know Just well you saying, know what guys. I'm quoting some commercial. There's no wrong way to play. Uh, and that said, let's let's begin playing because we've got a big score to get into today. So I will now do my overly wordy intro. Yes. A thousand years ago, this was a land of beauty and magic. <laughs> then came the cataclysm, which blotted out the sun and ripped open the gates to the, the land sun. of the dead. The city of oh. Duskfall is a metropolis of refineries and tenements uh, surrounded by crackling lightning towers uh, outside the city is a wasteland of ravening undead. Inside the city is a teeming hive of scum and villainy, intrigue and corruption. Life is somebody. cheap in a city ruled by death. The sun is gone. The only thing that shines in Duskfall are the blades Blade in, in the, the dark. dark. There we go. Yeah. Oh, thanks for the wow. assist. Hey, it's all good, man. It's all good. So here we are. We're back with the Remnant, our crew of shadows who have had to make some lineup changes uh, just lately. Uh, specifically, our friend played by Ross Bryant, Celia Khan, oh is God. out of commission. Do you remember what what put uh, Celiac out of commission? He just got so much harm on that last score that yeah. he's just not healed up enough, right? It's a combination of uh, being super duper injured and super and. duper stressed out. Uh, so he, there, there was no way for no way for him to fully recover. So I think he did recover some of his his physical health. But his mental health is shot. Like he's extremely stressed and uh, just needs some time to decompress. Well, that's great. I, I mean, that's okay because it let us it let us meet Eka Prag Wody. <laughs> yeah, ever since what like a week ago, it's like the way that a song gets stuck in your head. All I've been hearing in my head is Eka Prag Wody. <laughs> <laughs> like, it won't yeah. leave. <laughs> it's the, it's oh, the greatest that, name that camp. a computer program uh, randomly assigned <laughs> to you ever. Because um, mm -hmm. Roll20 just randomly assigned that name because I didn't make sure to change the name to <laughs> Ross's character, too. Hey. And so uh, it, it assigned us Eka Pragwody, and that's what we're going with, everybody. Yeah. Fate Eka chose it for us. That's mm -hmm. right. And uh, Eka Pragwody <laughs> is a lurk. 
Yeah. Uh, and when Juliette Bell Rose got in touch with him, Eka Prag Wody had a job to suggest to the crew, the Remnant. The Remnant are specifically looking for a way to create a little bit of funds to create some <laughs> money, and they're going to use their shadow abilities uh, to perhaps earn some coin for themselves. You are going to try a straight up B and E job on an estate in White Crown. That estate is the estate of Victoria Song, an old widow who lives in a giant mansion. Uh, out on uh, the uh, Isle of White Crown, where the most powerful nobles in Duskfall live. Um, mm. So, I mean, what, what's everybody think? What's your thought process going into this before we get right into the engagement role uh, and all that? What, what, what do we think? Thought process? Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> how, are you, how do you think you're going to handle this? I don't want too much planning, but uh, it might be a good idea <laughs> to just have a conversation about how this is gonna go so maybe well, you know another I'm, demon doesn't sure I mean, oh yeah sure. break your ribs there's, there's always room for demons though yeah always yeah. room for demons uh we, but i mean yeah it'd be nice to just have this go real smooth real yeah i say real. we hit this at night yeah i mean it's we're permanent when she's out going she's like in the oh, when gosh. she's i'd say we hit this when she's asleep Oh, mm -hmm. or out. That sounds smart too. But yeah. then we never know when she's gonna come back. Is a thing. That's fine. I could be watch. Great. All right. This okay. sounds like planning. So I'm gonna up. go <laughs> straight to our planning phase. So we've got uh, Falcos on this score, uh, the Cutter. We've got Juliette Bell Rose, the Leech, and we've got Ekaprag Wody, the Lurk. Someone who is skilled in infiltration uh, and and prowling. Um, so uh, my question is, what is the approach? Uh, and uh, are I we, can give. Our... Are we doing any information gathering, or has information? You can been if you'd gathered? like. That's a great question. Would you like to to do a little information gathering? Yeah. Yeah. I think the one thing that I would like for someone to do, <laughs> maybe Echo Prag since he's sneaky, um, would be to scout the home for any security details or anything. If there's security or cam. Well, I don't know. Are there cameras in the... If there's any traps or things, you know, outside If, if the, there are cameras, they are steampunk cameras. Steampunk. So I imagine, like, these Victorian, you know, uh, shutter cameras that take a long time for the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> the little right, gunpowder flash. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, or, like, a, some electric fence. Or, I don't know. They're rich up there, you know? Mm-hmm. Got a security right, yeah. daguerreotype. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you want to learn I'm, more? Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think yeah, the point is well taken. We should know like what the what the habits are. So if mm. if if um her ladyship uh goes out on a regular at regular intervals, it'd be nice to know that sort of thing. Very good. So Ekaprag Wody, are you the one that's doing this this casing of the joint? Mm hmm. Seems like a job for yours truly, done it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, I think Ekaprag Wody will uh will have himself a little stakeout. Great, and Ekaprag, what uh, what action are you going to use for your gathering of information? Um, I'm going to use Prowl, because right. I am going to just try to, like, be, just disappear and be around that, that uh, mansion, uh, skulking and, you know, lurking. It's all yes. there in the name. <laughs> yes, it's what you do. Um, all right, very good. Um, I'm gonna say that this is controlled because you're doing it carefully. It's just a, it's just to gather information for standard effect. Um, you will get secret extra information if you get a critical, but otherwise you will just kind of receive the basic details of this place. Great. And that Ooh. is that is a six. That's a six. So that means you um, you have succeeded uh, yes, fully with no complications. Start. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. So um, you should know that Victoria Song lives in a giant house. Uh, at the end of a lane where there are other houses, um, there are other gigantic mansions. It's the equivalent of Beverly Hills or the Palisades, uh, but uh, Duskfall style. Um, her house <laughs> is surrounded by a 20 foot high iron fence with big sharp needle like points at the top of it. Um, <laughs> It looks like the, the, she lives alone. You see her coming and going with nothing but a small dog. Uh, but it's exactly as you said, she lives alone. But it being White Crown, there are always blue coat patrols because 
they want to keep the scum from the rest of the city from infiltrating this part of town. Uh, there are no derelicts here, no people who are unhoused. There, there are no uh, soliciting uh, merchants walking around. Uh, this is a place that is kept pristine of all human noise. Uh, it is a beautiful curated a part of the city and so the blue coats patrol constantly you notice that a blue coat comes by a miss song's house every hour on the half hour mark they come by you also notice that she locks up that the whole place gets completely locked up including that front gate uh and the hour of uh, appropriately enough the hour of the song which is about an hour after twilight okay in Duskfall, even though there's no sun, there are fragments of sun left, and they kind of burn brightly for a little bit around twilight and then go dim again. And they call the the, the hour, that hour is the hour of honor, and then there's the hour of song. So um, so that is what I can tell you. Um, it looks like it's, uh, it's three floors. It's a big house. Um, it probably has some sort of courtyard in the middle as well, because that's how, that's the sort of floor plan these are designed mm -hmm. on. Duskfall is also a little fantasy, so the, the the mansions are also a little bit like castles. Mm. Right. Um, sweet. Um. In terms of her coming and going, I'm gonna. This is the last bit of information I'll give you. In terms of her coming and going, she doesn't come and go much. She is old. That's why Ekaprag decided this would be mm -hmm. a good target. She is one of the oldest people probably in Duskfall. You're not exactly sure how old she is, but when you see her come out uh, one day to like kind of uh, visit another house here on the same lane, she kind of walks with a cane uh, and is kind of very shaky on her feet. Okay, yeah. And, and Ekaprag, I think we said, is aware of her because like other performers at this... Uh, club he works at, a Grand Guinal slash Pleasure House is, um, have she's been seen there um, Okay, so they, this this weird, this lady has a weird side, she mm -hmm. she <laughs> engages in strain, maybe maybe that's her vice, maybe she yeah. has a vice and it's weird right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So this altar Poloni don't so much go out, but of an evening Round songs time, round song bells, you might find her out of her accustomed environs. Now, every half hour on the half hour, you got the blue sharpers coming around, so I think we're trying to drop a line right where we won't be seen like. If somebody's got clear eyes, clear homies, you probably want to be looking out because old Ecker Prague he likes it when someone's there to watch his back like mm. so with this information gathered do you, is there any other information you, you want to do any more information gathering is there a specific question you want to find out about her or her house mm. because otherwise we will move into the approach mm. are, 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 are blueprints and stuff like that like somewhere for uh what a very interesting question you know someone with the right action might be able to find something like that <sighs> um like is there like a yeah could i oh it's not great but like, i might what, as well like go try, to like a go a to library a library or something yeah, library or a, to see the actual build yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know, I went to university. I, I've got a family line of academics. Surely <laughs> I would know where to check. I just won't have a lot of dots and rolling it, but um, of going to see yeah, if there is a... Because uh, sh I'm sure this home has been here for a long time, too. Yeah, uh, so th th what action are you using? I was thinking study. Okay, great. Just then literally study it. Yeah. And I assume this is all just controlled and... Controlled for standard, yes. A gather information roll. Oh, oh, you know, okay, it's a five. It's a five. Success I mean, with a complication. Uh, yeah. Well, what I the way this is the way I determine that. You are not mm -hmm. able to find a blueprint of 
Victoria Song's manse of her manor house, what you are able to do is find patent records. And you see that a lot of the houses in White Crown were the recipients way back in the day of a uh, a leech like yourself, a a inventor, a uh, a technician who installed special security systems and oh, sold that's them. Not good. Sold them to <laughs> uh, a lot of the houses up in White Crown. Um, mm. So that is what you're able to find out that there are automated or you know mechanically complex security systems in a lot of these houses. Can I then find the person who invented that and beat them to a pulp? Well, <laughs> well I mean, it was probably a long time ago now, right? Uh, it, yes, unfortunately, Valkos, it looks like that person might be dead at this point because uh, a lot of these were installed, you know, 25 years ago. They were maybe not dead, but it would be hard to track them. It, would you like to try? I'm not going to say no. No. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, I think it's time for the approach. Mm-hmm. Is it going to be an assault? A deception? Stealth? Occult? Social or transport? Definitely stealth. Stealth, right? Yeah. yeah. Stealth. We're going classic stealth, classic b and And so now I must know, with stealth, what is the point of infiltration? What is the point of infiltration? So it's a wall with only one door that goes, <clears throat> like there one is gate. A, yeah, so I will say, uh, I mean, and you can tell me this, the, the great thing about Blades in the Dark is you can kind of imaginate it for me, mm. but I will say that based on your gather information role, there's an enormously tall, uh, you know, um, it's not a wall, it's like made of iron. So mm-hmm. there are bars. Mm. With like really sharp, you know, um, points at the top, and then beyond that, you see a f- big, heavy front door. Right. <sighs> so, is your point of infiltration the front door, or would you like to name another point of infiltration for me? Yeah, I think uh, another point of infiltration would probably be maybe less conspicuous. Um, so what are these, is it? Are these like very tight iron bars? Um, they are not. <laughs> yes, they have not been left wide enough for people to move through. To move through? Yeah. <laughs> um, does this uh, does um does uh, Miss Song receive deliveries? Visitors? Is, is that going to be your point of infiltration? You can simply say we're coming in as delivery as part of a delivery. Mm. Um. Could I? Could, oh, oh, what if we pose as a security, like as a tinker, like to do maintenance, like, maintenance yeah. and update? That's a if, good idea. If, should people see us, right? That would be the. That sounds like a deception, though. Just mm-hmm. so no. you know. Oh yeah. No, take um, it back. <laughs> let's. You know what? Well, you could switch it to a deception. That you, you, we we haven't we haven't committed anything yet. Falcons, I, I you think were that, saying. Well, yeah. I was going to say with the bars, I've got not to be trifled with, right? And it's, um, you can push yourself to do one of the following. Perform a feat of physical force that verges on superhuman. Right? Could I I love this. open the bars? Yes. Uh, So would you like that to be your point of infiltration? Valkos literally bending iron? Yeah, I mean, that gives us a... (laughs) That might be conspicuous, but it also uh, gives us a way in and a way out. Which yeah, is handy. Yeah, I guess we, we just have to keep it within an hour, right? The patrols are every hour? Half That's hour. right. They're or, on the half hour, but yes, hour. every but, every, but hour. every hour. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why, l- okay. Let's go for it. We and can are do you, this and, in an hour? Easy. And I want to know, I want to know, just to be clear, you're doing it at, at night when she would possibly be asleep. Is that right? And yeah. also, um, with the bar, with the bar opening, I'm gonna make it big enough for you guys to go through, but not enough for me. So when people walk by, they can just see it as they it it's you have to really look and stare to realize that there is a you know a, a something with this you know with the deformity of this bar, um, essentially. You know, in classic D and D, they'd need to roll a perception check, for example. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right, right. Uh, got it. Perception checks necessary. Loadout. What is everybody's loadout? 
I mean, if we're sneaking in to get shit done. I, yeah, I'm going to go normal. I'm going to go normal. I'm okay. going to get a light this time. Yeah. Are you staying outside? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but if you can, oh, okay. I don't know, maybe if you guys let me in, I could help you take more right. of the stuff, right? Right. So, yes, you're right, right, right. Yeah, I think um, because I'll, I'll be doing this, I might go normal also. Okay, yeah. great. So two normal, one light. Uh, and now it is time for the engagement roll. Uh, let's see. You get one die for sheer luck. Here it is. I'm using my great Norse Foundry dice. Nice heavy metal I got blades some of those in the dice. dark dice. See, aren't they great? <laughs> um, lovely. So uh, one die for sheer luck. One die for each major advantage. Hmm. What is the advantage here? Well, I'm going to give you one die for carefully sort of getting the lay of the land before you went running in. I, I think that's worth at least that much. And then negative one die for each major disadvantage. Hmm. Uh, I'm taking a die away, but I'm not going to tell you why. Uh, there is a major disadvantage here that you haven't stumbled oh, upon. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to make a fortune roll uh, about that. Actually, wait. Okay. And now I'm going to roll your <laughs> one die for your engagement. <laughs> Oh, right <laughs> There's gonna be like freaking mines in the field, and the one die for your engagement four. is a four, meaning uh, your uh, your job begins in a risky position, mm. and a risky position to me means that it starts just as we have said. This is already pretty risky, so um, it's uh, it's very late at night. What 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 hour do we think it's? What hour do we think it is? How late? How late is it? Do you think? I'll allow you to determine that much at least. Yeah. Yeah, let's go two. Okay, two in the morning, uh, otherwise known as the hour of something. I can't look it up right now. Sure. Uh, it's very <laughs> late. Uh, and so um, you, uh, you're you outside, and uh, Valkos, <sighs> uh, Valkos, how does your power work? What, do you, what must you do? <laughs> um, it's not to be trifled with. I must push myself. Um, but I'm trying to think what... Oh, fuck. Wait, can we be specific about the time being like 2.35 right after a patrol has gone by at the yes, 30 mark? Certainly. <laughs> right. Very Guys, smart. this is a terrible idea. No, tell us. What, what is it? I have zero in wreck. And that is what I would use with savage force or carefully applied sabot. That's like what I would no, use. You, if it's carefully applied, you could use finesse or skirmish could too. I? Of course you can. You can do whatever you want. Okay. You can use any action you want, and if you're doing it carefully and like trying to do it soundlessly, okay. Okay. I would say finesse applies. Okay, finesse then. So I'm yeah, gonna push myself. Like a mess. It makes okay. a, pushing yourself. Yeah, yeah. You get plus one die, and you okay. take two stress. Okay. And does that reduce the position or change anything? No, it's going to be risky, uh, and it's going to be for standard effect right now. Okay. This is going to get uh, uh, the gate open, or get the the, the you know the the fence Space. open, so that okay. you guys can sneak in. Heart of cards. Yeah, I got a six, yeah. baby. There yeah. it is. Yeah. All right. So you just see. I mean, uh, you explain it to me. You describe it to so me. So I simply just look around, um, and then I kind of just almost. Uh, open my rage essence vial but I instead of you know drinking it I take a small whiff and then I put my hands on the bars and I'm able to just pry it open and kind of enough for you know enough for them to go through as I let go calm myself down and tell them to get in it never stops being impressive I get it that's most impressive to have a front row seat to. <laughs> well, and then as I, I walk, walk, slip through this gap, it's like, you just rest those muscles then. As I, I slip but through the bars careful. and. I, I almost slip in right behind uh, Ekaprag. Okay. And I was going to say, uh, perhaps. I should uh, have a look out for any of these security implementations before you step too far. By all means. So now you are on the lawn. Now, in Duskfall, growing vegetation is not easy. 
Um, there are only being fragments of the sun left. So uh, a well manicured lawn in this case means just you know yards and yards of pebbles uh, oh. that have been uh, spread out all the way up to the building itself. I will assume that you approached not right at the front door uh, with the gap you opened in the fence. So mm-hmm. you're on the side of the house. You can see windows um, and you can see sort of like uh, weird fake trees made of metal that have been placed near the house to kind of give it kind of a, a cultivated and elegant look. Uh, and you are uh, climbing across the yard, which is just a, you know, a scree of pebbles. Uh, and uh, you must tell me uh, what you'd like to do, and I will, uh, I will let you know what happens. Uh, I, I would like to sort of, um, with my knowledge of tinkering and security, and or just of gadgets that are made, um, I would like to sort of scan the areas where I might suspect there would be something. I just want to check for traps. Yeah, you're checking for traps. Um, I want to know specifically where you're going. Are you going to a door? Are you going to a window? Are you... What are um, you... I'll, I'll turn to, to Ekaprag for, for his lead. Like, uh, where are you planning to enter? I think uh, Ekaprag would like to enter to a second story window where there would be less likely that... Uh, um, there might be a a trap wire or security mm. uh, bar or system in place. So he wants to go second story. Um, okay. So I guess I would check that wall. Then you know that that that's leading up. Great. Don't that. even bother. Don't even bother to roll. The wall seems fine, um, but you'll need to get a close look at the window he the wants window. to go in if you want to. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Let's let's do that then. Um, the wall, by the way, um, it's just sh- it's just brick, sheer brick leading up to the window here at the side. If you go around mm-hmm. to the front, there are more things sticking out, porches, you know, uh, uh, things to kind of climb on. But here at the side, it's just brick to the windows. Actually, there's a there are lower windows that you could kind of use as footholds, but they don't quite let you reach up to the second. Uh, story windows. So um, I want to know how you're getting up to that second story window. Eka Prag? Great. Um, I've got... I, I have I have something if you don't have something. I, I mean, I, I, I know a little <laughs> bit about your what you got, so I'm... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so hanging at my side, I'll, I'll, I'll take off gadget, is the uh, line thrower. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, great. I'll, I'll hand over to Ekaprag. Okay. And, um, um, but as far as, would, do I need to get closer in order to... Both of you need to use this together. You need to get up there together. You're going okay, in together, okay. right? I mean, unless you have a different plan. Uh, that that makes it. sense, because we're probably going to need to keep doing this. Um, yes. Yeah. So we'll use the line throw to sort of get closer up to the window. Very good. Um, I want to. I want to action to climb up there. I feel like Ekaprag should take point. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I'll, he should lead an action. What do you guys think? I, I'm going to lead an action. Let's do a group action. I'll do it with a finesse to um to shoot this uh, uh, line thrower up around a like a chimney piece or something up there or on mm-hmm. the uh, on the sill to get up to a, a second story window that I see up there. That's right. Um, so if you are leading an action, that means that our friend must roll as well. Our friend Juliet must roll as well. And if she fails, that causes you more stress. Oh, okay. Oof. Wait, so I'm also rolling finesse? Um, yes. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> no <laughs> dots. So. <laughs> and this is going to be, um, this is going to be risky for standard effect. You will get up to the window. Okay. Here we go. How did you do, Juliet? I want to know that first. Uh, oh. Okay, so I have zero wow. dice, but my lowest result was a five, so. Okay, so that is a success, so it means that you you take no additional stress for this, Eka Prag. Excellent, because Woo-hoo. I rolled a six. <laughs> oh, yeah. excellent. Okay, so you are now both hanging, so check. The line thrower connects to, you know, the edge of the roof, 
uh, and it and it holds, it it, it catches well, and mm-hmm. then you um you both uh, uh repel up the side of the uh, of the house, and you are now hanging right beside the window, and the only sound is the sound of the water, uh, the water out in the void sea, kind of crashing against breakers not far away, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe the sound of the wind, uh, and then. Uh, at this height, you can see a little bit over the rooftops of the houses, and many of them have their own, you know, these nobles are so powerful, they have their own electric lights that they kind of keep on their houses. And in fact, Victoria Song has one on her front door, but not here on the dark side mm-hmm. of the house. So you are completely in shadow, and you have a, a, you can look closely at this window. Would you like to do that, Juliette? Yes, I would love to. Okay, um... so I'm going to say that that, that includes the attempt to open this window because you are going to go inside of it, right? Ooh, okay, all right. Well, I would love to take this moment for a flashback then because there's a- Ah, (laughs) excellent. There is a something I'd like to prepare. Okay, great. What's your flashback? Uh, The flashback is back to the workshop at the grotto where I will be tinkering away and making some silence potions. Oh, interesting. Okay, amazing. Yeah. Uh, tell so me about bad. the silence potion. A yeah. uh, silence potion creates an area of utter silence around a shattered veil. Vial, even. <laughs> it's an arcane okay. potion, but it is part of the sort of standard sam- like standard creations that everyone knows. Um, so I don't have them normally in my alchemical bandolier, so I'd like to take this time to make some. Okay, great. Um, Let's have a tinker roll. Or, forgive me, I should never tell you what action to take. What action Um, do you think you would use to create a potion? Uh, I'm going to use tinker. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, okay. I mean, if you feel that way, I mean, if that's what you think would be appropriate. Okay, great. Um, Uh, Position for this? This is controlled. You're in your workshop. It is for oh, yes. great effect because right. uh, you ha- we have taken the we time. Have you ha- you have quality. extra quality materials, right. yeah. So, all right, here effect. we go. Here we go. Okay, oh. there's a six. There's Damn. a six. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that you roll a fortune roll here to see how many you make. You make four of these. Nice. So you can wow. use more later. Uh, Fantastic. And, uh, and so Although each I'll time use you use one, it takes out of your uh, a slot in your slot. bandolier. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so you're pulling that out now as you guys hang beside the window. Yes. The waves crash like... against the breakers. Mm-hmm. And what are you doing? What action are you using to open this window? Um, <laughs> I would also like to use Tinker here. Um, like you said, it's checking, making sure that it's safe as well. But before I do so, I would like to crush that vial against the wall so that we are in silence. Okay, right. great. Um, suddenly the waves go away because it's almost like you're in a bubble of silence. The sound of the wind goes away. Everything inside this bubble seems like a little hollowy. Like you can still hear your own sounds. You're not muted, but it mm-hmm. everything's a little echoey and hollowy. Uh, and uh, yes, you may now use your action to open this uh, window. It will include, of course, attempting to countermand any security systems that might be a part of it. Right. Okay. Yes. So then, yeah. So then we will tinker. Let me think. Is this worth uh, pushing for? Because this seems can important. Can I assist? You can assist. Ah, you can take a point go. of stress, and that will gain a die for Juliet. Great. Because I feel like this is, you know, this is our entrance and not setting off whatever <laughs> mm-hmm. may be here. Um, what position did you say this was? The position. Uh, I'm going to say that this is risky, uh, and it will be for standard effect. Um, can I, can I, well, okay, that's fine. <laughs> You've got some extra dice and you're using, a, uh, with you're one using extra. A, an action you're good at. Yes, one extra gonna... die. Okay, here we go. I think, yeah. Nice. Okay, thank goodness, well, you know, there's a six in there. Great, no, yeah. no complications at so all. I will so describe what the security measure is. I will Ooh. describe okay. what the security measure is, but you have successfully counteracted it and you can tell me how you do that. But okay. basically there is a lock inside the window that is connected to a tube or a pipe and you're 
positive that if it's not unlocked from the inside, or unless you use your tinkering correctly like you just have, that somehow air is released and some sort of whistle goes off. Mm. Oh. I, I figure I'm probably just going to block that tube then. Great. Yeah, so the second you get the window open, you stuff something down in the <laughs> tube, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Um, do you have something in your inventory or maybe <laughs> just, I'll give you, you know what? I'll give you that. I'll give you whatever this is for no load. What is, what are, what are you stuffing down in the tube? Um, um, let's see. I, <laughs> Celiac, I think brought back one of those horrible little birds that he ate with his <laughs> 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 at the golden plum. The Ordolan. The, the Ordolan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And I've kept one, and now I'm I'm stuffing it into this tube to live there forever. Wow, um, that is uh, so strange. Uh, living up to your well, reputation. We are, aren't we? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, so maybe even a bit of a calling card, a dead yeah. bird. <laughs> Um, right. And so you stuff that in and it perfectly, the bird's hollow skeleton perfectly allows it to fit and conform to any kind of like size tube diameter. And so you stuff it in uh, and uh, the thing goes Whoo! and then silent. It doesn't get a chance to really kind of go up to where it's actually whistling. Also, you know, it is within the silence potion. It is within the silence potion. And mm-hmm. now you are looking into a dark upstairs room. Um, you see, you know, uh, you see very vague shadowy shapes, maybe some kind of large wooden desk. Um, there is uh, perhaps a bed nearby, but it's very hard to see. You can't even see to the door that would uh, enter into the hallway from this room. And while you all are considering your next move, I am going to uh, go back to Valkos. Oh man, I thought I was gonna have the easy ride out of this. <laughs> Valkos, you what say you that gonna... you're the you're the lookout, right? Yeah. Okay, what action are you using to be the lookout? <laughs> Obviously, survey, but I'm a sh- got no dying survey, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, right. Well, I think that I think that that's that's the appropriate action, and thank you for not trying to weasel into uh, skirmish being the way that you're being the lookout. <laughs> so, <laughs> fists. <laughs> yeah, so um, let's go ahead and have you take a survey roll. I'm going to tell you that this is risky, mm. uh, and it will have the standard effect. Is you will you will see an oncoming threat um, if uh, if it shows up. That's a failure, um, yep. and so I Ooh, must dude. I must give you a consequence, and the consequence is as you are sitting there beside the fence, suddenly. Two hands put a metal chain around your neck and two other uh, bodies kind of surround you. uh, And you are, for all intents and purposes, you have men on you right now and they're trying to drag you off into the bushes. (laughs) Um, excuse me. That's what I'm going to (laughs) say. I'll be like, I think I'll be like, as soon as I feel that chain, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to grab it to try and get some air, you know, if, if they're trying to strangle me. And if they're trying to actually move me, uh, I'm gonna use my strength, my my skirmish to, in fact, I'm actually going to, let's do it this way. I was so shit at surveying, I was looking down like this and like, <laughs> it just happened. And I feel this thing here and I grab it here and I let them take me into the bushes. Mm-hmm. And I'll oh, allow them allow to take it. me into the, into the bushes and kind of you know move my head down. And as soon as we're in the bushes, <laughs> I'm going to deliver so much pain. <laughs> it's it's it will be unbearable. Well, let's see if you can. This is going to be a desperate action because if you fail, you're going to take some harm consequences. These guys came prepared. Uh, I'm mm. not going to tell you who they are or what they're doing here, but they mm. came prepared to deal with uh, with something like this. That's why they I'm got the jump aware. on you. So mm. you're going to take some harm, uh, and I'm going to say this is desperate because I think that these guys, the ones that are not choking you, have knives out. And okay. uh, you need to uh, desperate, and then if you succeed, I think because they got the jump on you, it'll be for limited effect, meaning 
You won't hurt them. You'll just get this chain out from around your neck. You'll just get loose of them. Can I, can I use my special ability again? You certainly can. There's no reason you can't use it twice, but right, you gotta I'm push gonna yourself. I'm gonna push myself. Um, take two stress. Take two stress, and I'm gonna use, it's not to be trifled with, uh, I'm gonna use uh, one of my items, which is, what does the Rage Essence vial do again? Well, <laughs> I, I can look that up, but Rage Essence almost seems pretty self-explanatory. Rage Essence. I mean, um, it sounds like it makes you, uh, it sounds like it makes you Berserker Fury, right? Mm -hmm. uh, enter into a Berserker Fury. Um, I'm going to keep looking that up, but I think that you you've already established the you're gonna you're gonna try to like gulp your rage essence. Is that correct? Yeah. So as they're kind of pulling me in, I've kind of just you know like a drunkard taking it, you know, taking the swig as they're pulling me in, and I feel this thing kind of coming up inside me, and I just lose my shit <laughs> all right let's see how it goes <laughs> so desperate limited yeah um that's right how many bonus die one and what does the rage you essence get the file one do? the the rage essence file a single dose greatly enhances the user's strength resistance to pain and irrational aggression for the span of several <laughs> minutes. You already have a power that it kind of enhances your strength that you're using. So yeah. I think you are completely hulking out here. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> oh okay. boy. Does it so does that change anything? anything? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that instead of limited effect, you now have standard effect, meaning you can yeah. also hurt one of these guys in the process. Okay. Desperate. Standard. Bonus die. Roll. Oh, no! Two, three, two, one, man! Okay. I want you to take a level two harm <gasps> called Strangled. And I'm gonna resist. Uh, great idea. Um, so oh, that's man. six stress yeah, yeah, into yeah, yeah. your resistance uh, attribute for this is going to be. Uh, I think it's. Sorry, it's going to be your prowess. Okay. Um, <sighs> okay. Five, one, two. The highest, How right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, five. A okay, five, five is yeah. your best. So um, you uh, you only take one stress from resisting. Okay. Um, and you don't That's take great. the level two harm strangled. But basically, I'm going to leave you there for right now. Valkos, it's taking all of your strength. This guy that they sent is pretty strong, too taking all of your strength not to, to keep this guy from strangling you because the other two guys have blades right up against your belly and you notice uh, as you're watching all of this go down that there are other men nearby uh and these that are, are with randos? these guys guy are they randos I wonder or, like, like or do they have a reason to be there's here there's a massive reason what happened yeah. oh yeah. no yeah. okay meanwhile oh no <laughs> i'm made some enemies <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, inside the house. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, dark. Do you need light or can you work without it? Oh, that's a great question. And at that at that moment, uh, perhaps I uh, you see from my uh, coming down from my head a couple of like goggles like dark goggles and like some little like oh and you know we're in steampunk dusk wall it's like little jeweler's lenses like, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, articulating yeah, yeah. down and it's like i uh, i know darling i see everything crystal clear and um some... i'm going to press two of the silence potion vials into ekaprag's hands too i and and i oh. here's where i should maybe say that I already have one. Just kidding. But Do you want one more? Sure. So you have two? Uh, okay. Mine, though, is unique. I think the, the ones that are, letter the law, the ones that are crafted, you smash and they send off their mm. silent effect. Yes. The one I have, you drink. Ooh. Oh, oh wow. that sounds way better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Different source. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I, what, 
I mean, Ekoprag's on a mission. Is there anything valuable looking in this room? Uh, you know, in this room, it looks like uh, she's just kind of thrown stuff she doesn't want anymore. It's a lot mm. of old furniture kind of pushed up against the wall. There's a bit of a Miss Haversham kind of vibe here. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe she's become a bit of a hoarder in this old house. But this room, now that you've got your... And by the way, is that a is that an item on your inventory? These it goggles? Sh- it sure as heck is. It is the, uh, it is the item Dark Sight goggles. Dark what? Sight goggles. So you're looking and, and it looks like a lot of junk. This is a kind of a junk room. So, uh, But you do clearly see the door that leads out into the hall. Great, I would like to silently crack it and, and, uh, and look into the hallway. You do, and standing right outside the door, wagging its tail, is a tiny dog. Uh, and it looks up at you, uh, and it goes, <sighs> and then it starts to bark. No, use the thing I gave, just gave you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, why not? I smash the, uh, the or I, tr- I, I kind of s- break the, the vial off in its little maw. <laughs> what action are you using? You have to do it quickly to silence Finesse, this thing. if it's quick. Yeah, I think so. Great, here we go. Um, I, what is my position? Your position is risky. I mean, obviously this thing obviously. could cause an alarm. Um, <laughs> an alarm. <laughs> an alarm. And also, I'm going to go ahead and start... Um, I'm going to go ahead and start a clock. Uh-oh. Uh, well, I'll start a clock, but it, it won't get any pieces filled unless you start failing things. But I think that the clock I, I, I'm going to start is called Blue Coat Summoned. Okay. And uh, the mm. more sound that comes from the house, the more likely they are to show up. Um, and I think that this is a... How many pieces is this? We're going to go ahead and call it... I think it's six pieces. You guys are being quiet. You're doing. You know, You're not being rowdy and chaotic. So, um, uh, let's go ahead and have you use, let's go ahead and have you use that, uh, that action. Great. I just rolled finesse and I, the highest die is a four. Uh, wait, uh, that's a success, is, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, four. um, that means there's a, that means there is a complication. Uh, Mm -hmm. Success with a complication. The success mm -hmm. with the complication is you have successfully silenced the dog. It, like, is barking silently, like... (laughs) Great. Good. Uh, And then uh, the complication is it turns and runs down the hallway. Okay. Okay. Um, Oh, no. Can I... This is the... So, question. Is this the dog we've seen her with? Yes. May I may I flashback? Yes, you may. Oh yes. Great. Um, oh, by the way, Joe, your earlier flashback oh, yes. cost you one stress. stress. Thank and you. Go ahead, Ross. Sorry. What does okay. Ekoprag's flashback entail? Ekoprag will be. Uh, I want. You said that uh, um, meat is available, but incredibly scarce here. Yeah. That's right. So I think, but let's 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 say at this flashback, Ekaprag Wodi is in a is in like a an alleyway where there's like blood on the ground and um <laughs> like and uh, um door opens and like a little like a butcher's boy comes out. It's like so then got a uh, little understanding, flesh for flesh, eh? And um. And Ekaprag uh, receives maybe uh, four services rendered. Gets a little bag of like tender bits of offal and uh, and um, snouts bits. and tails and all the things that little dogs like. And but he would also like to um, put some uh, uh, sedative, some knockout drops in there. Yeah, that makes yes. total sense. So you get that, uh, and I'm not gonna make you roll an action for that. I am gonna cause. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make it cost two stress. It would only Done. cost one stress if it was just meat. But you're you're actually getting a chemical mm-hmm. and all of this extra stuff. So two stress, and you have this right now. Great. And and I think I'll just like almost toss this little morsel tidbit to our barking friend. Um. Very good. You toss it. It. It uh, falls silently onto the carpet, um, and uh, the little dog is running away, and suddenly it stops, and its mm-hmm. you know ears go up, 
and it turns back, <laughs> and then it runs over and starts uh, uh, eating the morsels. That's a good little boy. There we are. And it's mm. eating them, and it doesn't appear to be slowing down yet, but it is eating mm. them and uh, happily chewing and gnawing away at the little bits. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tripe, dear. Never been my taste. They can't resist. Um, <laughs> and uh, off we now I'd like to scan this hall. Like, Great. Oh, that, that also gives me an indication. Like, if the, whichever way the dog was running is probably bedroom. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. So That's right. Um, in fact, you see a room at the end of the hall that seems, uh, you know, it's shut tight, but it, 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 there's just something about the door that looks uh, promising to you. Mm-hmm. What do we think? <sighs> Perhaps. Best, best sparkling bits next to the... Uh... Next to the old Poloni's bedchamber. Oh, I would be I would dare. be remiss not to mention this to you as well. Something, um, so this hall also looks out on the courtyard on the other side of the hall. Like mm. there are windows out of the courtyard and mm. something is glowing out there. In the courtyard? That's correct. Oh hmm. my God. That um, one's watching, done it. Yeah, um, well, let's take a look at what this is. I, I will quietly just approach the windows so I can take a peek out. Um, it appears that Miss Victoria Song, like many of the most moneyed people in Duskfall, has radiant crops uh, that so that she can have uh, the delicacy of delicious vegetables uh, wow. instead of just eating mushrooms grown in disgusting sewer tunnels. Uh, she's eating radishes and turnips and big tomatoes that are grown without the benefit of the sun using radiant crops and these crops glow in her courtyard there she has a beautiful little garden plotted out meanwhile outside I can tell you that um, the men that are holding Valkos have pulled up a vial (laughs) in that vial Valkos for a second you see something glow inside and it's a face. Uh, there's a reflection on the vial, and it's a face. And that face looks like completely like dead, like catatonic. You see it for a moment, and then they pop it and shove it up against your face, just like you just took your rage essence vial. And they're forcing a spirit into your your corpus, into your body. Can I not res- like fight this? You can absolutely fight this. When we come back from our break, we're going to take a short ad break. And when we oh come back, gosh. we're going to find out if Valkos, a guy that likes to let spirits ride him, is able <laughs> to true. resist the effect of this strange spirit entering his body. When we come back to Haunted City on the Glass Cannon Network after this word from our sponsors. Welcome back. We're pulling a B and E job here in Haunted City, our game of Blades in the Dark. And right now, the cutter, Valkos, has been uh, absconded. He's been uh, caught outside of the house that the other players are currently um, trying to loot uh, by mysterious strangers. Uh, We don't know who these men are, but there are more than three of them. Um, One of them has Valkos choked by a chain. The other two have knives out, and one has just broken a vial with a spirit inside of it. Uh, and that spirit is trying to work its way into Valkos's face. So Valkos, uh, <laughs> you don't have to resist yet. It's not a consequence yet. This hasn't happened yet. Mm. You need to tell me what action you're going to use uh, in this moment to kind of stop this from happening, if indeed that's what you want to ha- want to do. So I'm gonna, how does the chain work? Someone's got it around my neck, right? Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to sort of go to headbutt this guy who's trying to shove it in my face. Yeah. Um, uh, And like, as I'm, you know, trying to almost like, as I like, it's a way of like moving, like I'm back slightly because I get, I I guess this guy's like pushing me forward, right? Yeah. But I'm going to almost use that feeling of him trying to push me to this thing to launch myself forward in order to kind of get this guy off footing. Excellent. Um, Okay. Yeah. Uh, that that makes sense. What action uh, do you think that will be? I'll be a skirmish. I think so. Um, yeah. So skirmish, and mm. uh, this is going to be. I'm going to call this. I don't think it's desperate because it's. Uh, 
it's not quite desperate, but it's risky, and it will be for, uh, I think it will be for limited effect, and the effect, well, the reason it's limited is you will just, you will, you will not hurt anybody, you will not escape, you will simply stop them from getting this thing into your face. Now, um, this um, rage is, 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 go on. Uh, oh, yes, your rage the, essence. In the players versus uh, GM here, I would like to bring forth, can one not uh, trade their position for greater effect? They One can't trade position for effect, and right. Valkos, you were just asking about your rage essence yeah. file. You know what? That's still, that's still happening, too. So, mm-hmm. you know what? Uh, right now, you can have standard effect, meaning okay. you will not only stop these guys from letting this spirit kind of get into your system, but you will also break free uh, possibly from their grip if this is successful. Okay, this is it, guys. But, this but is Abu, going. Abu, you oh, could, yes. you could, in fact, uh, you know, take a desperate position for a for greater great effect. effect and and net you some XP in the process. So you oh, could go I, from standard to great. Can effect. I do that? Do you want to do that? Yeah, fuck it. Why not? Okay, <laughs> let's make this desperate. Well, for are you great effect? <laughs> let's let's re- let's. I mean, this might be a great lesson as to why you shouldn't listen to like your lawyers sometimes. But maybe <laughs> yeah, it might be a fantastic reason. Yeah. So here we go. Here we go. And this is why we listen yeah. to our lawyers because I cry, Ooh, baby. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. <laughs> Thank oh, you. My God. Um, you uh, do as exactly as you say. You headbutt the guy really hard. He drops the vial, and the spirit is sort of like leaking out of it. And you can see as the ectoplasm leaks out like a, a cloud of vapor, slowly hands form and are kind of like gripping, you know, the concrete beneath it. And like a body is starting to form on the ground in front of you. But I want you to describe how you completely escape from these guys' grip. So I essentially. You know, you can see me panicking because, I, you know, my first failed attempt at trying to break out was, was scary, but it's because the rage essence didn't kick in yet. And suddenly <laughs> what ends up happening is you just see my eyes almost go white and I just start um, almost chanting in my, like, Severosi sort of, like, and I literally just lose my shit and just break out of this whole thing. So, I, yes. The chain breaks, Uh, you know, similar to moving iron bars earlier, you just completely rip the chain in two. Um, And now you are surrounded by, let's see how many guys using a fortune roll here. Yeah, that's what I thought. You realize that there are six guys around you Mm. uh, and you're a little bit hidden from the street. You're not quite in the electric lamplight of Duskfall. Mm. uh, And these guys are uh, over in the bushes with you beside the house. And by mm. bushes, by the way, again, there's not a lot of vegetation. These are like these are like metal bushes that have been manicured to look like you know, something that's aesthetically pleasing. So um, they are actually quite hard and sharp, just to let you know what the environment is. And they've all pulled knives, and some of them are holding these little vials. Great. And, and- uh, the spirit that forms in front of you, um, mm. it just forms for a second, and you can see that it's just like someone sitting there and kind of rocking back and forth, saying nothing. Definitely a feral spirit that's like almost catatonic. Uh, Mm. And it doesn't even remain visible for very long. It sort of starts to kind of fade out of sight as you're watching it because spirits aren't always visible. Often they are in the ghost field. And now I would like to know what you're going to do as these six guys all start lunging at you at once. I'm gonna literally pull out my, um, my like blades. Uh, which is a yeah. fine hand weapon. I'm gonna use, actually, what's the difference between a heavy and a, fi- and a, and a normal hand weapon? Um, I think heavy probably has the potential for creating more noise, but it probably does more damage. Yeah, I think then maybe, cause I'm just lost actually, I'm just gonna pull off my, my, like I've got a small weapon cause we got, we came here light. I wasn't expecting to fight. Um, it's, I've got a fine hand weapon and essentially, uh, a, uh, and like, maybe I would have taken with me, um, two pieces of like this, like, like light armor, just in okay. case. Okay. Uh, so that's what is the, my what is the fine hand weapon? What, what kind of weapon is it? Again, it's my, it's this beautiful little, like, again, like Severosi dagger that I always take to intimidate people. 
Right. And uh, it's and I'm you know I'm just looking at everyone, <laughs> and as I see that I'm looking at this ghost, and I'm there's almost a moment of me wanting actually to just jump in. But again, this rage just kicks in <laughs> inside of me, and I'm gonna mm-hmm. use my not to be trifled with again. Okay. And skirmish every single one of these people. Take two more stress. Where are you on stress already? I'm yeah. already one before trauma. No. Oh. Yeah. That ain't oh, good. Yeah. Okay. No. So um, take two stress, and you yeah. can oh. that that allows you to fight all six of these guys at once to like mm. a, you know. Normally, you'd have very limited effect doing that, or not mm. even be able to do it at all. But because you have used not to be trifled with, you can fight all of them at once. And what action are you going to use to fight them with this tiny Severosi dagger? I think I'm going to use my skirmish. Yeah, it's that a, makes it's sense. A brawl. Yeah, it's a brawl. And I'm, and I'm going to be. And what's the position? This is going to be um, risky for standard effect, like. Uh, you know, um, you could take a consequence if this goes wrong, but it probably won't be like nasty harm yet. Uh, and um, you, um, well, you, you're going to start taking them out depending on how well your rolls go. I'm going to listen to my <laughs> fantastic lawyer again, and I'd like to exchange <laughs> the uh, <laughs> position for desperate for a great effect. Desperate for great effect. Um, I, well, see, I have to allow you to do that. And I'm going to say, uh-huh. I will allow it. Um, okay. so <laughs> on the advice of counsel. Great effect. But now you should know that these guys are just throwing these vials at you uh, okay. and trying to explode them against your face. So okay. here, oh, and by the way, you recognize them. They're the guys mm. from Flint's. Of course. Of course. Yes. And I'm going to send Flint a message. They here. Damn. Okay. All right, okay. here you go. I got a mm-hmm. six. Mm-hmm. Oh, six okay, is a okay, success. Okay. So let's see how many you take out. And it also means that uh, you take no consequences. So none of these, you're being silent. You're taking them out quietly. And none of these vials Beautiful. have managed to like kind of connect with you the right way. <sighs> and you take out two of the six guys. Uh, please okay. describe how. So, uh, you know, I, so one of the vials kind of go past me and I kind of see it. And then again, that flint, that, that kind of streak of rage comes at me and I take my blade and I just stab it in their throat, like straight up and then rip it across. And as the blood kind of hits me, I kind of again get this like flash of like, um, almost again fighting back, you know, my brothers and everything and my sisters back in the time, ta- you know, in the Severosi clan. And I look at the next one as they kind of swing at me. And as they swing at me, I come under and I just start stabbing their stomach and gut it open, reach in and pull their stomach out. And I look at the other two. And <laughs> hey, I'm come just on, like, this wasn't a on. critical role. You can't pull out a hey. test. You, you, should have, you, should have, you should have seen if it was a critical, mate. You would have waited <laughs> wait until that happens. <laughs> um, uh, no, fair enough. You stab an, enough of a hole that you kind of start to get in there. Um, you are, have rage essence in you and you have yeah. gone completely feral. And uh, while all of this is happening quietly, by the way, let's go back <laughs> to the two that are inside the manor and find out what say, their next move is. Yes. I feel like this is where we see like, like Celiac's influence still protecting us as I'm sure like earlier a ritual for the, the Crow's Veil mm-hmm. to come into effect here. Crow's um, Veil if, is the entire crew. It's not a power that only Selyak yeah, has. It's for the entire I, well, crew. I'm flavoring it as in he has helped us like, facilitate. I, I, I imagine him doing the ritual well, I think before kill an old lady. every score. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, it's an insurance policy. It's insurance policy, great. <laughs> that smoke um, is pouring out of you. Face. But yeah, meanwhile, it, do we know, would these vegetables be worth a lot? Interesting. You think that actually they they would be? Hmm. Okay. And, those, and that's all out on the courtyard. Yes. And it's glowing, which is the, the more difficult, I think, less sneaky part. Okay. Um, yeah. So so we're gonna go on a tomato heist like some old Looney Tunes <laughs> gophers. <laughs> well, what what is? Okay. Should we split up? Do you want? Do you really want to check the bedroom where she is sleeping? Mm. <sighs> the dog flops to the ground as you guys are whispering to each other, oh. uh, and then you hear a little, a little, a cute little doggy s- snore come from Aww. it. Mm-hmm. It's very cute. 
I, I can't help but I wish I, I just want to, to boop that snoot. <laughs> We're time for booting snoots later. I'm gonna. <laughs> I. Eka Prague's got to see what's in the what's in the bed chamber. <laughs> all right. What's okay, in the chamber well, of then, secrets, darling? Uh, but if you want to, by, by all means, if you want to uh, root around for some tubers and tomatoes, then <laughs> be my well, guest. Perhaps on our way out, as it is outdoors, could I borrow those um, goggles for a moment so I can just check this door before you go through? Uh, great. Sure. Okay. Uh, put on those goggles so mm-hmm. I can see and check yeah. the bedroom door before we try and like do this. The door is not itself trapped. No, it looks like the windows were trapped, possibly doors into or out of the house, but not the internal door. Does it look like it will open silent? Um, what a great question. Um, you, you kind of like just barely tap it and it, it looks like it'll open pretty silently. I mean, not, not 1000% silent, but uh, it's not gonna make a loud screeching sound. <clears throat> mm, okay. It's. Well, I, I guess I would say normal door rules apply here. <laughs> normal door, <laughs> yeah, but not some like old creaky one specifically. No. Okay, I'll door. hand the goggles back. <clears throat> um, what? What? Yeah. It's just a normal a, door then. <laughs> All right. It's, yeah. it's like. just a door. Um, but be very careful. But you are very quiet anyway. <clears throat> Great. After you. Keep your eyes out. All right, yeah. So I'm gonna turn the knob and go in, and uh, just and start to slink in and just grab anything of value that I see. Uh, well, what? I was say, what as, were as, ask? Yeah. as Ekaprag goes to grab things, I would like to be at the red. Uh, clock where she is. Are we walking into literally just her bedroom if she's mm-hmm. there? I want to not be collecting things and grabbing things. I want to just be on eyes on her, ready with like trance powder. Okay. Um, you enter in, and uh, there's a little light coming from a window outside here. And you see that she, uh, her little tiny form, is in an enormous canopied bed, mm-hmm. uh, just covered with tufts and muffets and. Uh, every type of, you know, there's a diaphanous uh, silk curtain surrounding her. Yes. Um, and uh, you can just hear her wheezing quietly. <laughs> and um, you notice that there is an adjoining room to this room that didn't have uh, an egress into the hall. It looks like some sort of walk-in closet or wardrobe. Uh, but this room is, is pretty cluttered, like... Uh, if she has a housekeeper, uh, they're not doing a very good job. <laughs> this room, like the like the junk room, is is sort of cluttered and filled with old old lamps and old clocks and things like that. But nothing that looks particularly valuable. Okay. Maybe let's take a. I mean, I'm tantalized by a by a door. Um, let me just sneak over to that uh, that wardrobe door. What action are you going to use to sneak over there near a sleeping person that might uh, uh, awaken and notice you? You still use... have one silence potion left as well, right? That's right. Yours, um, yeah. Got the one I yeah I've got yours and mine. Um, well, I think you use the one use mine on the dog, right? Yes. So I've just got mine then. Um, uh, great. Uh, I'm going to use uh, finesse to sneak over there. Very Ooh. good. Um, let's uh, let's. So, f- so how are you um, using fine manipulation to sneak over there exactly? With with. Uh, I think it's we just. He's a dancer. He's a. Um, and it's like those sort of like dance shoes with with that with the give in the center and like just everything really quiet and sleek. Also in the loadout is this uh, this this shadowy um, cloak. So he just looks like a shadow, and <laughs> and just kind of s- sliding, slinking uh, forward with uh, with with a uh, dancer's steps. Uh, because you're using your dance, you're literally dancing over there. Mm-hmm. I think I will allow you to use finesse. So, right. um, 
Let's see how it goes. I think this is going to be risky for standard effect. You will get over into the other room. Great. Risky. Standard. Here we go. And that's a six. Mm -hmm. It's a six. Mm -hmm. Boy, the dice are on the side of the remnant today. Mm -hmm. I know, Um, truly. You make it into her spacious wardrobe, and you see that there's sort of like a mannequin head. uh, And that mannequin head, she hasn't put her things away. There is a big diamond necklace hanging from its neck and two big studded diamond earrings hanging from its ears. Diamonds. There's also a lot of... A lot of gowns and under things all haphazardly hanging from under different things. Yes, <laughs> all haphazardly <laughs> hanging everywhere. But the the jewelry station is very clear. Yes. Yes. The the the, the necklace and the and the earrings go into the cloak. Um, you know, does she look to be about my size? Just out of curiosity. Uh, is Juliet <laughs> is Juliet very small? Um. Yes. This woman, is, this, woman is, this woman is maybe five feet. Oh uh, no, she's taller than that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. This is. Mm. These things are too small for her. She's so <laughs> tiny. Mm-hmm. She's just like so tiny. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, you have uh, you have captured those things, and then you notice something else back here. What's oh, this? Oh no. Thing? A big metal open door at the end of the wardrobe. Uh-huh. Open? Oh, open is suspect. Oh, man. Um, and with my... I assume we've traded back. With yes, my yes, yes. darkness gogs, can I peer into that darkness and and see what's inside, behind the open door, beyond it? It looks like a safe, and inside you can see some, um, some money. Huh. Okay, I, uh... Hmm. It's too good. This feels like bait. No, no, take it, take it. Yeah, yeah. I want, I want it bad. Can I, can I just, can I briefly and quickly, like, can I survey to see if it, if it looks uh, dangerous? Yeah, absolutely. You can. Um, your survey will be controlled for standard effect. You will learn something about this situation. Okay. Oh. Uh, I did not. Oh do of that. I rolled a two. (laughs) The old woman is senile and has forgotten to close her safe. What an opportunity. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) Well, uh... Oh man. Like a pragwood, he can't resist. (laughs) Oh god! I mean, someone... Someone, of course, with uh, less susceptibility to temptation might, uh... Turn around right now, but that person ain't Eka Prague is no. it? And so the little dexterous hand goes forward to the money. Well, it's almost like a it's almost like a room. That's how big the safe is. Okay. So oh. um Eka Prague, here's oh, what happens. Wow. You step in. Uh-huh. That's the consequence for your failure. Great. You step in as you have just narrated. Mm-hmm. You feel a click in the floor, yep. and the door slams shut behind you. <gasps> Oh, shit. And you hear, like, a light ticking as it seals. And it feels very stuffy in here. Uh Juliet, you're on the other side of the room, and you, uh, let's say, I'm going to say, you said you didn't sneak across the room, or that would have been maybe a group action, so you're not quite sure what's going on. Um, You're in a very small space with some coin, uh, Eka Prag, and... uh, Pressing uh, on the door, you see that there is a place to put in the code on the inside of the door. There are like these like typewriter keys. Okay. <laughs> and okay. it's ticking down. Okay. Uh, oh my god. Wild. Um, okay, I'm. <laughs> the ticking is getting faster. Great. I'm going to try to stop it from. Jam it, jam it. Can you flashback to maybe I don't know? Yeah, I mean, I can flashback to try to know the uh, this code. Um, <laughs> How? I guess. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see what what the flashback is. <laughs> yeah, um, that that I mean, that would, this just seems like writing your way out of something. But uh, uh, that's what the flashbacks are. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Blades um, in the Dark. Great. <laughs> that's it. Um, okay, great. I think, uh, 
Maybe uh, uh, the flashback is... Uh, um... Great, we're back. We're back in the grotto. And... Um, <laughs> okay. And... Uh, and Ekoprag is just studying the very stressed out uh, um, Celiac. Uh, and you tell me if this is outside the rules. And, Look, uh, <laughs> if it's really bullshit, I'll just make you take a lot of stress. Great. Um, it's like, like, this isn't my first job, you know. But you know. I like to find my way in. Now there's keys, there's trap doors, there's doors that pull, there's doors that push, there's doors that drop, there's doors that go by numbers, doors that go by gears, doors that go by pulleys, and I find my way into doors, that's my business. But there's some doors, what you need to know, inside here, right? A passphrase, a series of letters, hmm? This is the sort of thing that's always waiting for you. And if this lady's got those sort of numbers, those sort of words rattling around in her mind, I'm not the sort of person that would like to be seen by her, right? But you've got, um, you've got your ways to reach into people's minds, your little friends. So if there is such a thing, you think you could, uh, be a team player then? <laughs> Maybe ask one of your ethereal companions to do a favor for Mr. Wody and it'll make it worth your while um so basically what he's asking is like can can a a ghostly spy sent by Celiac retrieve a mnemonic <laughs> to give to uh to Ekoprag um that's certainly possible I'm gonna I'm gonna give that um to stress, and then I want you to have Celiac roll in action to see okay. how successful he is. Oh. There we go. Um. <sighs> <laughs> so that will obviously be a tune because I'm trying to yes. reach out yeah. and yeah. reach out and touch someone. Um. You only get two dice. So what do we what do, uh, what do we got here? Uh, we're gonna call this risky for standard effect. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Success with a consequence. The consequence is, huh, interesting. Um, what would a consequence be? Well, it, it's just a, it's a flashback and you paid the stress. So I mm -hmm. want to give you the answer. Um, but I, I know what it'll be. Okay. So the, the code is the dog's name. Tassie. Uh -huh. um, the ghost what comes the back name? to Celiac and be like, she loves her dog. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the right. dog's name, why, when Echo Prag like, stakes out the place, she hears the woman going, Tassie, Tassie, come, Tassie. Uh, and you're looking at the looking at the typewriter keys, like on the inside of this safe door right now, Echo Prag sees that there's all the numbers, but also all the letters, and you can type in the dog's name. Um, the problem is, you're not sure what how to spell how Tassie. It's spelled. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Oh. Is she a Tassie with one S? A t no short short vowel double consonant. T A S S Y or I E. Could be an E with could be an E with an accent. Could be uh right, 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 right. Um and then, no you, and then you've got Valkos like saying, maybe the E's a three and the A's a four and Oh yeah, it could be lead speak. Could be lead speak. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, and, um, <laughs> so the okay. consequence actually, you, you're able to get, you're able to um, do it if you give me an action right now to kind of get this done. Okay. Um, you're right. able to fix it, but um, but the consequence is no matter what. Right now, I'm adding to the blue coat summoned pie. Right. One. Mm. I'm doing one. It's it's six. It's a six, uh, six tick pie, six tick clock, and I'm taking one tick off of it. Okay, that's okay. the consequence already. So I've got you've gotten a... it wrong once already, and something right. is like going like, eh, like eh, eh, you know eh, what eh. I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I've got to give you an action roll to punch in the code. 
That's right. I mean, to, to get it right quickly, to, to figure out. I mean, maybe it's figuring out the spelling. Maybe it's right. like how quickly you do different options. I don't know. Look, okay. Uh, then if it's if it's quick quick enough to punch in different options, then it's finesse. Because okay. uh, mm-hmm. because yeah, these 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 little pickers and stealers can um get in there and uh and and type ever so many words per minute. So let's uh let's go for it. Go for it. Um. Boom. Boom, boom. This is risky. Uh, nice. And you oh, got a yes. six. You, uh, yes. you figured it out. <laughs> that you, you tried the simplest option first, T-A-S-I, and that was the per- correct uh, spelling of wow. Tassie. Mm. What? You tried the option Insane with the less, least letters spelling. first. It was just logic. It was finesse. Has and he? You have, that. Has he? Okay. Uh, <laughs> and, so, uh, yeah. Click. <laughs> And the seal breaks and you can breathe again. You're not locked in here. You are now standing near an open safe door and there's a lot of coins sitting around. And into pockets it goes. Um, um, you have, your score is, if you can get out with this much, you've, you've got a substantial amount of coin now. I think it's maybe time to- And the diamond necklace. Oh yeah, I got yeah, the necklace, was, got the earrings, right. got the coin. So, with that slamming door, that didn't she didn't stir or anything. Um, I I think I, I put the blue coat summoned uh, talk, tick okay. ticked one pie off of the clock. So I think we've covered that. Mm-hmm. So maybe she I hasn't pop, gotten up. Pop out and look. okay. Um. All right. Well then, <sighs> if she didn't wake up from a slamming door, I'm going to go help Ekaprak just to grab more things. Okay, hide, great. Hide some things under the bustle, get every, you know, as much as we can in our bags. All right, let me, what is your action for sneaking across the room? Oh, God, I didn't think about that. <laughs> my you action for potion. sneaking across the room is using my silence potion. <laughs> okay, yeah. great. Is that what um, you're going to do? Do you want to use it? Yes. Yes, I, okay, w- I will. Okay, then guess what? Since you, since you were clever enough to pack that, I'm not going to make you roll. I'm going to hey. just say... Your silence potion makes you absolutely silent, getting across the room to help him. And okay. you start filling bags with stuff while she wheezes quietly over on the other side of the room. And I'm going to go outside where uh, four guys, wait, right? Four? There, there was four, four left. Two. Or four left. Yeah, there were six yeah, all together, and then now there are four left are <laughs> coming after Valkos. And the problem is now they're starting to yell and, and scream a little bit. Okay. And that's not good. Okay. They're making, they, you're not making any noise. You're dispatching mm. them silently. Mm. But they're going, hey, stop, get him. Oh, uh, no. And they're making sounds. I'm, st- I'm going to, you know, commit and just keep fighting them. Okay, great. Um, I think that this is uh, risky uh, for standard effect. Uh, I'll roll a die and we'll see how many of them you take out. Um, and um, doing my, the riskiness do- is that a consequence could be that the blue coats get here faster because this is causing such a ruckus. Whereas a desperate would be. A desperate means they're gonna really hurt you and gonna, summon the blue coats possibly, or, or at least tick off more of that clock. I'm gonna desperate with great effect. Okay, desperate with great effect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you, know what? You, you, you know what, you've pulled that trick twice already, Valkos. I'm not gonna allow you to do it this time. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, you just don't trust my lucky risky die, for do you? Standard. Yeah. That's all right, mate. All right. Got you. <laughs> Here we go then. Risky for standard. Here we go. It's six. A skirmish roll, yeah. and you got a six, my friend. I'm gonna roll to see how many of them you take out this time. <laughs> and I rolled. I'm sorry, Valkos. I rolled a one, so there are still what? three hanging around. Uh, but I mean, let's. I'm gonna roll fortune for them to see. How committed they are to staying right. in this fight? I mean, surely because I'm seen like one guy get gutted. I'm ch- I'm chanting all sorts of I'm whispering shit as I'm like taking them out, like <laughs> kind of you know like it's ritualistic. And they succeed with a consequence on their fortune roll. They get a four. So to me, that means that of the three that are left, one just bolts. Right. And so there's only two left, really. Okay. Uh, Makes sense. Okay, so they're still screaming as well. Well, I'm gonna um, tell you what happens now. 
Okay. One of the two that's left pulls out a different vial and smashes it on the ground on purpose and a spirit starts to form and you can see as it rises up that instead of looking like a catatonic person staring forward it has it's a it's an old man with a look of hatred on his face and he raises bloodied hands as he emerges from the vial this spirit looks a little bit more dangerous and just as you are mouthing curses under your breath so is this spirit <laughs> and then if when i see that uh, you know this sort of flash of not a flashback but a flash of remembrance of what we deal with spirits back in the day i suddenly bring out my spirit bane charm oh okay to, yeah uh, excellent, excellent, excellent. So, um, I don't think I'm gonna make you roll. I think that that's just an excellent use of equipment. Um, now, have you used, let's see, you had a, you had a fine weapon, and you had armor, and you had Two a armor. spirit bane. But the spirit bane charm is in, in italics, meaning that it doesn't count for load. Ooh. It doesn't count for load. <laughs> excellent. Right. Um, uh, wow. the spirit lunges at you, and wow. as soon as you pull up that charm, uh, which looks like a little kind of like Fabergé egg on the end of a... Uh, end of a little chain, it kind of like ah! howls in rage, but it can't get any closer to you. Mm. Uh, and uh, the other guys close in to attack you again. Uh, <laughs> but meanwhile, we're going to go back into the house. In the house, uh, you have loaded up everything out of the wardrobe and the safe. Where to now, scoundrels? I mean, uh, let's seems make like our times, way of, back times of the essence. Yes. Shall we? Shall we? Slide down. I, on. Yes, I think forget the forget the veggies. Let's just uh, exit <laughs> where we came in. <laughs> um, Forgetting the veggies. Yes, uh, we'll go down where I assume the like. I need to be pretty good food to eat. Still, I uh, know, I know. No, no, it's glowing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we could come back to get. Uh, are the are more. the vegetables themselves glowing or the 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 sort of hydroponic lights that they're oh. nourishing them with glowing. So, um, you guys would, would have some knowledge of this living in Duskfall. Okay. Because there is no sunlight, certain organisms are used, uh, are experimented on with demon blood and various other uh, alchemical agents to make them radiant, uh, gotcha. to give off radiant light which can allow crops to grow. So, the crops themselves glow, uh, because mm. they've been subjected to this process, but there must be something else down there that is emitting the original source of the light, some sort of organism that they've experimented on. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. You um. could go down there. I mean, look, Juliet, you weren't wrong when you were like, is this going to be worth, would those be worth money? They would be worth, in theory, more coin than what you are currently <laughs> Why smuggling Why would you out. say this? God damn well, it, Well, I'm just dude. letting you know, like, <laughs> And I'm not talking about the crops because crops like this are grown all the time and people eat them at places oh, like the, the Golden Plum. Whatever the organism is, that is uh, something that has very carefully been cultivated, experimented on, bred to give off radiant light. If you can figure out what that organism is and take it, that is worth the an, an enormous amount of coin. Do it. <laughs> I, I hear Valkos's. And, and, like, yeah. voice in my mind. <laughs> is this little little patch of garden in, in a court courtyard in the center of this building, or is That's it? That's right. It's in the center gotcha. of the building. Well, we can still go out the window and then just go around, right, to get to the courtyard. You or is would it have fully to... enclosed on four sides. It's fully enclosed on four oh. sides. Oh, it's like a okay. it's like a little plaza see, in the see, center of the. Feels okay. like if you go down these stairs that you see nearby, you could kind of easily exit out like some double doors out into this yeah. courtyard, you know, where she has her garden. Uh, but you have to be inside the house in some way to get to this garden. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, look. Uh, we're here. Let's just take a look. And uh, I would like to. Again, checking for traps along the way as we make our way down the stairs to these doors. Very good. Um, I love that we're just fully back in uh, yeah. old school D&D &D checking for traps. Well, I um, mean, I'm, we're in a home that has had multiple traps. Yeah, um, why don't you give me an action roll uh, that would allow you to kind of check for traps? I think that that's important. Um, can I use my tinkering skill? 
Um, sure. How are you tinkering to figure out if there is anything? Um... It's more in using my tinkering knowledge and knowing the kind of traps that would be set and where they would be placed. Without that tinkering knowledge, I feel like I would just be looking at a home. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, I'll allow it. Uh, th this is going to be controlled for standard effect. You will learn something about the house. Okay, there's a four. There's a four. <clears throat> there's a four. Success with consequence. You see that the you see that the doors out into the courtyard. You look down the stairs are also rigged with that same special like kind of piping Tube, yeah. and that piping leads somewhere up into uh, the bowels of the house up above you in the ceiling uh, who knows what's up there um, but you see that yes um, uh, there is a, there is an alarm on all of those doors that you will have to deal with and the consequence okay. because you rolled a four is mm -hmm. that you are now taking extra time and extra time means the blue coats might be okay. summoned one, one more blue mm -hmm. coats Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I'm taking that another, seems, that's fair. That's another fair. Another piece of the pie. Okay. Um, I, uh, I'm going to point it out to Ekaprag since he saw me handle it on the window. It's like, you think you can reach and disable this one? And it's at the top of the door to the outside? Um, right. Uh, so the door has this kind of piping going off yes. of it, and then it climbs up the wall up into some sort of apparatus up in the ceiling. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's 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 go. Okay, I can, great. I can stop it. How are you doing this? Um, Do you I mean, have I any more dead birds to stuff into the I, pipe? I realize that, <laughs> that our loadout for this included a dead bird and also a bag of loose uh, but butcher's bits. We've become <laughs> loaded with all kinds of d dead animals. Yes. Um, and I will but, assist. But I might use a, a more pedestrian, like a uh, bolt of fabric or something to just like thunk, s stuff in there. Where the uh, suction of the of the pipe might just jam it in place. Okay, very good. Um, this is not easy because you do have to cut the pipe open, or or you know un, you know what I mean, like uh, unspool it and kind of like uh, get something in. So um, I have, uh, bur I have um, burglary tools. Yes, Ooh, you'll need those. And yes. uh, with your burglary tools, what action are you going to use to uh, uh, disable this alarm? Um. I, I keep leaning on it, but it makes sense, I think, finesse to... I mean, that's why this, I suggested you This is what it. finesse is for, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'll and, allow and it. And yeah, I'm going to take a stress to assist. Okay, done. Thank so you. get an extra die. All right. Uh, so, risky? Or... Risky, or this, yes. yes. Okay. Risky for standard effect. You'll okay. get the door uh, safe. And I get the extra die from the assist. So, yeah, I come up with my little... Little shears in the cloth, ready to snip. <laughs> little shears. Oh. And yes, I get a six. The yes, you yeah. do. And so um, <laughs> you stuff your bolt of cloth down into the open uh, tube, and you uh, you are able to open this door out into the glowing courtyard now. All right. Um, wasn't expecting to do any light farming, but uh, look, let's make it quick. It is so valuable, so valuable, Ekapreg. Okay, okay. Um, we make our way into. Oh man, would. I, oh. You gotta find so it would be underneath. Yeah. Would hey, I you, know what, kind of where you, this you, would be placed? You, you, you can now walk out into the courtyard. Is that are you're trying yes. to find out where the yes. creature is? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Um, creature. I, I want another action. I know, this is getting, it went, started at organism and now it's a creature and now I'm getting a little more. <laughs> I want more another creep. action to figure this out because you're just kind of walking okay. through this garden and like there's yes. like tall corn and like, you know, tomato plants and you have to kind of navigate um, through it. And they're all glowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. <sighs> is, what, is your survey better than mine? <laughs> uh, no, almost assuredly okay. no. Okay. Um, so I'll survey. Is there anything I can use? Not really. Uh, all right. I'm going to survey. I'm going to push myself to get an extra, like, two stress. And what's the position here? Position is, this time it's desperate because you guys are taking a long time out yeah. here. Okay. Uh, and this is your biggest score, like, the, getting whatever this is and yeah. out with yeah. you is your biggest score. So. 
uh, desperate, um, but it will only have a standard effect. You will only okay. figure out. Okay. Here we go. Um, and then an extra die for pushing. <laughs> I only have two die. Okay, here we go. Go for it. Oh, Ooh, no. A failure. Should have... You can't find any sort of cage or often you've heard that uh, like eels are used or fish. Uh -huh. You can't find any sort of pool out here. You're not sure what is causing the radiated, uh, the radiated um, crops to grow. You're not sure what the organism is. And I have to tell you, that uh, I'm gonna take two ticks off of the blue coat sun because you spent so oh, no. long. Oh. You yeah. spent so long. I, I can't find it. I don't. I don't know. I. Shit. I don't know how to farm. <laughs> Ekapreg, do you have any no, ideas where it would be? It's. It's. You need to now. Uh, you need to now do something different. You yeah. can't just kind of search around. You've got to just try something. Well, okay. you, what if we just start wrecking this shit? Uh, that, that is also an option. Idea. Like, That's actually like just not a bad idea at all. Yeah, yeah. Like, it uprooting makes sense. Ripping the plants. It up. Uh, yeah, yeah. You want to try um, a wreck roll? It seems like more of a more of a. Unless you have more, something more of a widow thing. I mean, I could. Uh, um, I, when I'm leaning into, I could, I could uh, prowl, I suppose, if there is a like a quiet and uh, more subtle way of doing this, of like maybe trying to follow this uh, a cable to its source, and um, 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 you know, there's nothing like that, and uh, I, I, I don't want to like force you to take a certain path, but I will say that like. You're, it won't be really loud wrecking because you're wrecking crops. Right, right. right. It's, so, but, I have nothing but, in wreck, but might as well. Do you, well, so do you want to assist me? Do you want the widow to do it? In, yeah. That way if we you, can both be, we're both like digging away at the dirt, yeah. like trying to sure. find whatever the source is. Do you have any pips in wreck? Yeah, I have two pips. Oh, then yeah, it's all you. I can okay. assist you though. Okay, yeah, go ahead and take the stress right. and give her right. a third die. That's a good there idea. And position, is this still desperate then? Um, yeah, it's it's more desperate now than it was before, <laughs> isn't it? So yes, there. it's des desperate for standard effect. Okay, and then I've got an extra die. All right. Okay, Ooh, successful Okay, no, but there's a four. There's a four. Okay. You the figured dice. out what is causing the, the irradiated crops to grow. As you start tearing apart the, the, the crops, you find all these glowing snails on them. Hmm. Oh. And you realize these are the organism. They're very tiny. That's why you weren't able to find them before. And it'll take time to pick them off the plants if you want to get all of them. Uh, but there's a consequence. The highest you rolled yeah. was a four. Yeah. Uh, the widow starts doing this. And now the widow is glowing brightly. Her hands are covered in the <laughs> slime. <laughs> the widow is emitting okay. light. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. Just do just it. Like, just do it. Collecting yeah, these snails, glowing, like, putting uh, them into a container. Love, um, it's uh, what? Oh, very well. What? <laughs> no worries. What is it? I, and I think I take off that fine shadow cloak and hurl it over uh, the widow. Very good. Um, uh, I will allow you to make one action roll to scoop up as many of these as possible. Uh, it will be risky because I'm going to tick off another tick of this blue oh, coat shit. summon clock mm. if you fail or you get uh, a complication. Okay. Uh, 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 is it, wait, do I have to do it or can Echo? It's up to uh, whoever th thinks they have the action that can scoop up as many of these things as quickly as possible can can let Look, me know. That's, that's finesse. That's me. Yeah, yeah that's Let's do it. Finesse. So this is yeah. uh, desperate, I take it. This is desperate, yes. Okay, so here we go. It, baby. Let's go. A failure. <laughs> oh, damn. What does it even mean when we fail to collect? <laughs> collect snails. We fail well, well, our snail it means collection that, it, means that you, it means that you got all the snails that you possibly could, and then you look up, and the old woman is standing outside watching all, <gasps> cool. all of you. She runs Shit. over to the wall and pulls no. a lever. No, resist this. Res Wait, can you? Well, Do you have enough stress? I think we may have already resisted it if, if she's attempting to blow the whistle if we jammed its works. Oh, is um, that? 
Uh, no, 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 she, Unless this no. Unless some she, other thing. The, the, you, you jammed the, the, that particular door. Gotcha. She's just setting off the security system. But you yeah. can resist this consequence. Would you like to resist this consequence? Resist it. Uh, yeah. Do you have resist the room it. to in your stress, or is that? I, I just barely do. She's standing nearby. She's standing. Uh, no, she's inside the house. Okay. She's you know she she looked out the door at you and then hobbled over quickly to like the side of the stairs and pulled like a lever down. Great. Uh, I have I don't have a lot of stress to spare, but we gotta resist, right? Yeah. 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 Let's do it. Okay. Fuck it. Okay. Um, so that's six stress, and I think you're gonna resist with your resolve here because um, okay. I th- or, or maybe what should it be? Resolve? What should it be? Let me look at your character here. Um, prowess would mean getting to her before she's able to pull that lever down. Yeah. That's what I think it is. Would you please resist with your prowess? Yes, sir. Um, so that's just okay. Here we go. Good lord, and this is the amount. Oh, hey, mate. no mate stress, C. dude. Uh, amazing. No stress, and you Lord actually grab her hand away from the lever before she Yo, pulls it, and I'm she's too looking to be up at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is like it's. This just triggers some, like the old, the old, uh, the old carnival uh, kid, just kind of like wheels up, and and maybe just kind of like you see the, him serve like almost like double jointedly slide through a window and is like got this woman up in his in his hand like ah 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 darling let's not do anything foolish should we and she has a high class duskfall a- accent so she she talks a little like Juliet and she says you cockroach you disgusting vermin remove oh. yourself from my home oh keep insulting me dear you'll have me here all night who knows mm. uh. Uh, and, it's like, and I'm just kind of looking at looking at uh, uh, Juliet like get out of here. Um, um, yeah, and so I guess I'll start I'll start making my exit. Um, before I do, on the outside wall, can I just take a little? <laughs> this is so stupid. Um, I'm gonna take a little like stencil of a skull and a little gunpowder like little blasting thing and just make a little singe mark of the outline of a skull. I want to tag her her home. Are you going, where are you going out of? How are you escaping the house? Oh, that's right. Shoot, Same I way. guess I need to go back upstairs and out our yeah. Is that what you'd window. like to do? Yeah, because it doesn't seem, I would have to, because otherwise if I went out another door, I would have to do this whole trap detriggering that's, again, that's, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah, that seems logical. No, yeah, I think I'm just going to run through because she already knows, so I'm not no longer have to try and be quiet. Um, yes. So, so I'm just going to run back to the window to exit. So um, we're going to see how Valkos is doing with with, with what's yeah. left out there in a, in a moment. But first, I want uh, the the old lady looks into your eyes, Ekaprag, mm-hmm. and let's see how good she is at recognizing people. Yeah. Let's roll a fortune roll. Actually, okay, yeah, I know exactly. goggles still. Uh, that <laughs> means it. Budges things a bit. Am I gonna pass them when I uh, go up to? Um, are you gonna pass them? Yeah, you are. Oh yeah. Can I just blow some trans powder in her face? Sure. Do you have room on your b- bandolier for uh, a trans I have, powder? I have a second bandolier. Oh damn. Yeah. Um, trans powder, oh, trans powder into her bandolier. face, <laughs> and she's like, uh, "What have you? I must." Sleep. That's it. That's it, darling. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. You off to dreamland. You and Tassie together in sweet, sweet sleep. Um And I look oh. up at you look up at the widow like Thanks a million, that was close. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Let's go. S- yes, so you're running back up the window to make your exit. The woman is just standing there kind of staring off into the courtyard, the glow lighting her face as you exit up the stairs. And back outside, I want to tell you the real the real problem here, Valkos, is not taking out these two guys that are left. You're sure you can handle that, no problem. The real problem is that the ghost that can no longer touch you goes and starts heading toward the house. What? 
I have a ghost is heading toward the house uh, where your then, friends are. Then I'm going to try. <laughs> Hear me out. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm going to attune. Yes. And I'm going to almost communicate <laughs> the <laughs> ghost to come towards us and attack these two men to keep them busy yes okay um great uh let's have a, a really good attune roll here this is a this is a eh, risky attune roll uh, okay. for standard effect it will listen to you if you succeed at this what's a devil's bargain devil's <laughs> bargain is that Ooh. if you um if you want an extra die right now the only way to get it to do that is by dropping your spirit uh, bane charm. Mm, 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 <laughs> you drop your spirit bane charm, it'll come back toward you. You don't have to take the devil's bargain. You know, you might still have succeeded this attune roll without taking the devil's bargain. I'm gonna do it. You're gonna take it. <sighs> you drop your spirit bane charm and you start to attune and let's see how it goes. Has Abu ever said no to a devil's bargain? Never. I <laughs> succeeded Success with the consequence. With yeah. the consequence. Yeah. Uh, the consequence is, of course, that the spirit sees you've dropped and it immediately turns around <laughs> and it just attacks you. Huh? Oh, it jumps on you. Its bloody hands go around your neck and it's trying to force its way into your body. And... Um, Let's see you uh, deal with that. You can use an action to deal with the spirit right now. It could be another attune action if that's what you'd like to use, or you could use some other action. It is actually fighting with you. It's using its ectoplasm in a solid form. What so would you like to do? So if that's the case, could I then throw myself at one of the uh, people to pass off the ectoplasm? Yeah, I love that idea. Yeah. What action are you going to use to I'm do gonna that? I'm going to be using against Gurmish. Okay, um, great. Uh, risky. Risky for standard effect. Cool. I crit yes. it, man. I double yes. six, man. Yes. Oh yes. my days. Oh uh, my lovely. days. The ghost is on top of you. It's trying to force its way to your body, and you just roll over and smash yourself into one of Flint's men, and the ghost, like, it's, it's completely feral. Like, it doesn't have a lot of, like, you know, um, sentience or decision making so it just goes into the most available vessel which happens to be this guy that wasn't expecting this to happen and you watch as he's like ah, ah, and the ectoplasm is forcing its way down his throat that's when his friend goes fuck this and runs away as well and so now you're standing outside with just one of Flint's men like struggling with this so, ghost as that's happening um, and I've kind of rolled out the, you know, rolled this out. And I can I have I looked at the? Can I see where these guys are? Uh, you mean uh, Flint's men or your friends? No, no, after my friends. Yeah, like, they are currently coming out the window. Okay, I'm gonna literally then kind of make my way towards the fence just to prep them and guard them. So I'm in the way in case this this feral i mean like because i can't i don't want to cut him up and then release this ghost for then it to come at me so i'm just yeah. sort of gonna i'm using this as a as a way of like diverting myself diverting the the time so then when we're all together we book it um if you would like you can all be together now i think that you went out the right exit can i tag cool. the building on the way out just yes, a small, you may. Tell, small little scene. So it's like you set off this little charge and it makes a little bit of ash that forms the, uh, an image. Yeah. Describe the I image. Have like the, I have a little stencil of a skull so that it just singes the outside the shape of a skull <laughs> into <laughs> the building's outer wall. And it is small, you know, like like maybe around this big. Just, just Yeah, right for, beside that upstairs window? Um, uh, we can... Sure, yeah, why not? Okay, great. <laughs> Um, and then you uh, land in the pebbles that uh, form the lawn uh, and you run toward uh, where Valkos is uh, standing. And uh, the only thing left to do is to get out of White Crown. Um, there yeah. are blue coat patrols all over White Crown. <sighs> so I would like to know who is going to roll the group action that gets you all out of White Crown. 
without running into a blue coat patrol. Lucky baby, come on. Mm -hmm. Let's finesse it out of here, eh? Here we go. <laughs> um, um, All right, so um, the, I need uh, finesse rolls from the other two. Uh, oh, and if they damn, fail, that means Ekaprag takes stress. And that's a okay. that's a bad thing for your your friend Ekaprag. Ekaprag, how much stress do you have left? Three three quadrants, three okay, no, okay. quadrants, three chunks. Okay. That's fine. That's okay. And, that's okay. And our positions are what on rolling this? We'll call it risky standard. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh no. Four. No, it's fine. Oh. No. Oh shit! No, you failed. No, I have zero dice. Oh, so you okay, take so one that's... stress, but it's fine though. You just take a stress, right? Right. I got, right. And, I got and, a one. But I yeah. get, do I get an extra die for any of the for this group action or anything? No, no. It just means that you're able to just your roll my counts role. for everyone. Gets for everybody. Okay. Well, oh boy, here we go. All right. Oh, okay. No. Wait, no, there's a success. It's a success, it's a success with a, it's a success with a, with a, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, a success with a consequence. I got blinded by lower dice, but there's a higher one there. Everything's uh, the success yes. cool. with a consequence is, uh, it's this. That spirit raises itself up after it's sort of fed, it's, it, this is a nasty spirit. It raises itself up after it is sort of fed on one of Flint's men. Uh, it like entered his body and hollowed him out. And now it drags itself up out of, uh, his innards uh, and it looks off uh, and watches you running down the street uh, and it crawls after you uh, and it sort of goes invisible as it floats uh, and it hunts its prey it hunts its prey Valkos the consequence is you may have a, uh, a spirit that is now on your tail that could Fantastic. appear again at any moment I'm fucking ready oh, for it oh man but yes Guess what? What? You have successfully completed your score. Yes! Yes. You have yes, yes. earned the maximum amount of coin you could have with this <laughs> yes. score, which I have determined is eight coin. Yes. Oh eight my. Coin. Yes. We will get into that all when we do our downtime chapter next episode, next time. But wow, this was the best. I think this is the best, cleanest score you guys have had yet. Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, how are you feeling? Terrified. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, you said telling you you win. You succeed. Yeah, I, I feel rich. I feel rich. Yeah, with a consequence. Anyway. With a consequence. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready to spend all that coin when we come back next time. Until then, my name has been Jared Logan. Their names have been Josephine McAdam, <laughs> Abu Salim, and Ross Bryant. This is Haunted City on the Glass Cannon Network. We will see you next week. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>